I'm Jordan Rayner, and this is the Word Before Work. Today we're reading from Exodus 7, 1 through 2. Here's what it says. Then the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, and your brother Aaron will be your prophet. You are to say everything I command you. Again, that's the Lord talking in Exodus chapter 7, verses 1 through 2. God could have set the Israelites free from Egypt all on his own. He could have taken human form, walked straight into Pharaoh's palace, and led the Israelites out of Egypt for good. But that wasn't his strategy, as today's passage makes abundantly clear. The Lord said to Moses, quote, I have made you like God to Pharaoh, end quote. In other words, while God could have done this work on his own, he chose to do it through Moses and Aaron. Why? Was it because God had more important things on his to-do list? Of course not. It's simply because this is how God has always chosen to operate. All throughout scripture, from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, we see that while God is perfectly capable of working on his own, more often than not, he chooses to work in this world through human beings. That was true with Moses thousands of years ago, and it's true with you and me right now in the present. In the words of Tim Keller, quote, we are called to stand in for God here in the world as his vice regents, end quote, his deputy kings and queens, which is precisely what Paul is getting at in 2 Corinthians 5.20 when he calls you and I, quote, Christ's ambassadors, end quote. Think about the role ambassadors play on behalf of nations today. They themselves are not sovereign, but they stand in for and represent the sovereign and the values of the sovereign's kingdom. So it is with God and his kingdom. One of the purposes of our work is to stand in for God, to be what James Davison Hunter calls a, quote, faithful presence for him in our places of work. To be like God, not to Pharaoh, but to our bosses, to our coworkers and our customers. What does this look like practically? It means exposing evil in our companies and our industries. See Ephesians 5.11. Making God's appeal of salvation to the non-Christians that we work with. See 2 Corinthians 5.20. And working heartily as unto the Lord, knowing that it is through our work that God feeds, heals, clothes, protects, and helps the world. See Colossians 3.23. The purpose of your work is so much bigger than providing for your needs or fulfillment. You wear what Martin Luther called the masks of God, standing in for him in your small corner of creation. Stand in as a bold, joyful, and faithful representative of your king today. Today's devotional only scratches the surface of how God's word connects to our work. If you want to go deeper, sign up for my free 20-day devotional called The Word Before Work Foundations at twbwfoundations.com. These email devotionals are designed to help you gain a rich understanding of the biblical narrative of work, how exactly your work matters for eternity and what those truths mean for how we ought to work today. Sign up right now, again, totally free at twbwfoundations.com.